Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Glory to God. And welcome to the Laughing Club. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. Amen. This is the Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast. And how <laughs> Mary Hart does good like a medicine. Glory to God. I want you to join me in welcoming Dr. Avery Jackson to this broadcast again today. I, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm so, in, I'm so blessed and thrilled with what we're learning and what we're seeing. Uh, I, I want to read this because I had to, I had to exercise this this morning. I was uh, physically, I, I was tired this morning. Mm-hmm. I had a good night's sleep last night. I get good sleep. And, uh, but I woke up and I worked out hard yesterday and, and then taped yesterday. And, and so <clears throat> today, the great scripture, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, it's been translated, who strengthens me? But I want you to notice here, he didn't say Jesus. Uh, yeah. He said Christ. Mm-hmm. He is referring to the anointing. Mm-hmm. And to, of course, you can't separate Jesus from his anointing, right. but the word Christ is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah, which is anointing. Jesus said, I am anointed. God has anointed me to preach. So I can do all things through his anointing that strengthens me. And if I'm asking Jesus to strengthen me, then here's something I'm missing. I'm not out of line, but I'm, I'm, I'm not hitting the bullseye. Mm. What is the bullseye? Joy. The bullseye is joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And we have joy on the inside of us. It was imparted into you. It when you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, because that is part of the fruit of the Spirit. It is God's joy, and it is in there whether you feel good or not, but you have to operate it by faith. Amen. And that's what that scripture right there, that's exactly what it's talking about, is that anointing that comes from joy, and it strengthens when there is no strength. And then that just, that just fires off the, that, that'll just shoot you right back to Isaiah 39 and 40, talking about the strength of God. And uh, man, I certainly didn't think about getting into this, but I'm going to do it. Glory to God. <laughs> I receive my strength. Jesus is my strength. (laughs) I will go in the strength of the Lord. I love you, Lord, O my strength. Thou hast girded me with strength. I go from strength to strength. The Lord Jesus is my strength. He makes my feet sure and fast like a deer and makes me walk upon the high places. A wise man is strong. A man of knowledge and knowledge increases strength on and on and on. I mean, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, I just gave you what, about eight? Yes. Counting the, these other two here. Yes, sir. Glory to God. It's in there because he's in there. Yes. But you have to activate it and you have to go back to what you need to do to increase that strength. He's talking about here spiritual strength first, but to get it, out of your spirit and get it over there in that body, you're going to have to put some pressure on the muscles and the bones and the ligaments and the nerves of the body. You're going to have to work it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Smith Wigglesworth, the great apostle of faith, 
got up every morning. He, he took two things every morning. First thing, take communion and dance before the Lord at least 15 minutes. Wow. Every day. And I don't think he just kind of went like this. <laughs> no, he referred to David who danced with all his might. And I know you use the same tool and I want you to talk about it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sometimes I have to wonder if I need to pad the rooms. Because <laughs> when I'm in a spirit, you know, it's you, you can make a decision to be in joy and to laugh when you don't feel like it. And so one of the exercises that I do at night is is uh, is I, I get in at least 10 belly laughs a day. And all the stress is all built up from the day and all that, you know. And so I start off, ha, ha, <laughs> then ha, ha, ha. And then you get going. And, and I'll even criticize myself and I'll say, well, that sounds pretty lame. Come on. <laughs> right? That's pretty lame. But then I'll laugh because it I sounded it. lame. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get over into this gusher. And now I'm in the spirit. And when I'm in the spirit, I mean, I am sailing. Just sailing. And so, I, you know, I got to be cautious I don't fall and hit something. Praise and God. And it's wonderful. And then everything feels good. I'm, you know, my muscles are alive. My brain's alive. My awareness is alive. And I just feel stronger. So do that every, every Brother day. Hagen would say, I feel good. I feel fine. Body, you get in line. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, and even in relationship, study looking at women who have breast cancer. And they found that when they have this, uh, this cancer, um, they have the traditional therapy, it's radiation and chemotherapy. Well, they looked at a group that just had the traditional therapy versus a group who had support. And they found with a social support to strengthen them that their outcomes were better as far as the cancer treatments, their quality of life and their length of life was better. Right. Yeah. So that's undergirding and strengthening uh, of, of each other made a huge difference in that. Now, when did, when did you start? Um, I mean, at a really young age, praising and worshiping like that. When, when did this revelation come to you? Yeah. So became born again, uh, been with Bishop and Keith, uh, uh, Keith Butler uh, and uh, Pastor Deborah Butler, Word of Faith. And so they taught us from the beginning about praying in the spirit and spending time with the Lord. So early on as a youngster, we pray in the spirit and you, you, you get slain in the spirit, you'd be on your back, you know? So early on, that was just part of the teaching. So you had line upon line teaching and then the, the spirit and allowing the Lord to do what he needed to do or would do in your life. And you, you develop this joy. So as a child, you'd always want to be happy. Children laugh uh, 300 belly laughs a day Adults at, after the age of 30, less than 10 belly laughs, usually for weeks. Yeah. And so, so then, you know, praying and so you, you get happy back then. And so that was a, just a part of what we did from the time we were little. <laughs> That's good. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And with those relationships, it really made a difference. So relationship, we talk about the, the who we are, we're spirit being, we live in a physical body and we have the soul, mind, will and emotion. So when you uh, pray and when you have relationship, and especially when God's word is first, all, everything just goes right in the line. And so, you know, the undergirding and that strength that we talked about, you know, with relationship makes a huge difference. And that relationship is intrapersonal between the spirit man and the soul and the body, and then interpersonal between each other. And so it just makes such a difference. When someone that you love uh, encourages you, that has an effect that goes straight to your frontal lobe in your brain, then from there to your hypothalamus, which is the master relay system, that then the, releases chemicals that help to strengthen all the cells in your body. And so that encouragement and that touch and that, you know, that, that hug, you know, that handshake, no, it's okay, brother or sister, has a profound impact on a DNA level. Praise God. Let me ask you this. Have, have you ever had an opportunity where you had a real um, an, an unexpected situation uh, 
I'm thinking about a situation now. We were, this is number number of years ago. And um, <clears throat> my niece, Gloria's brother's daughter, and my son, John, and his wife, Marty, and my little niece and her husband. The next day was the Southwest Believers Convention. Mm. This was on a Sunday evening. And uh, <clears throat> they'd been down at the convention center where getting everything ready. And, and uh, they were so excited. Nikki was, was pregnant and their, their first child. And they were so excited. Mm. And so they were coming home. And a drunk guy just broadsided them and Nikki was killed. Mm. And I mean, and, you know, and then John called me that night mm. and told me, well, man, it's like hitting me in the head with an ax. That sudden thing like that. Mm. And of course, I, I shouted and cursed death just as loud as I could right then. I didn't know then what I know now, particularly about what we're talking about here. What an opportunity. We've been talking about Keith Moore preached during the convention and so forth. We have victory over death. Now, what I'm thinking now, what just flashed across my heart, had I known to, instead of reacting like I did, to, to, to be trained to why I would react, just laugh just as hard as I can and just dance before the, before the Lord God. Thank you for victory over death. Hallelujah. Now, I quickly gained the victory over it mm. because I knew to do that. And grief wasn't a part of our family and, and, and so forth and so on. But I was just thinking, what a, what a weapon uh, of power to immediately just begin laugh at the mm. top of your voice. Have you ever had an opportunity to do that? Yeah. So, so as a neurosurgeon, I operate on on adults. In my training, I had to operate on children, and I have these little babies on the operating table, and my hand would could rest on either side of the table when I'm operating, oh my. and they're just that that big. And I had a scenario where I was assisting one of my mentors and a, a, a baby that couldn't have been days old had a brain tumor. And it, the brain, uh, the, we operated and we were five, six hours into surgery and it, it would keep bleeding and then we would cauterize and it would bleed and we'd cauterize. And then it died, the little baby. And uh, his name was, first name was Mark. And we had to talk to the family. And so when that happened, when, he, when, the, when Mark died, you could see a change in, you know, the, the kind of the life went out of his eyes. And so at that moment, my heart really wanted to just drop. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and the Lord kind of lifted me up and he said, it'll be all right because he's with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's with me. And I realized, wow, okay, let me get my, my act together because he's going to be in a better place than where I'm at right now. And so that was a chance where I had to, 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 to really uh, seek the Lord and, and have some peace. And so joy quickly bubbled up in me. But now the challenge was we had to put him on some life support and, and keep the heart beating because that was getting ready to fail and then go tell the family and then let the family come in and see him. And that was just, it was overwhelming to, to go to the family and say, this is what happened. We had this, you know, the, the surgery did everything that we could and, you know, and, and, and now, you know, Mark's, Mark's, he's, he's on his way out. He's, he's obviously going to be with the Lord. And so, uh, and so we were able to have that, that conversation with the family. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a weird place to be because on one end, me personally, I had the joy of the Lord. And that undergird me and gave me strength for Mark. Knowing where he is, I could celebrate. Yeah, sure. But now I had to turn to the family who yeah. was grieving. Yeah. 
and, and had to have kind of some control about how we communicated with them to let them know that we cared, you know. And so that was, that was a time. My goodness. We have to know these things and we have to develop them. This has to become a habit. It has to become a daily habit of joy to whatever happens, joy is the next step. Whatever takes place, joy is the next step. Some little irritating, some, I had a little irritating thing happen to me this morning. It wasn't even really worth talking about. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm thinking about right then I should have laughed. Instead of, well, you know, what? no, right then I should have laughed at the whole situation and then laughed at myself and, and, and then it don't have to repent. Yeah. <laughs> I think we just take ourselves too seriously sometimes and the situation, we put it out of, con- you know, it's, everything's kind of out of context sometimes, you know, like for instance, the weather, you know, people talk about how it's too hot, it's too cold. And to, you know, to me, that's a subtle trick of the enemy to get you going that way because now you're dependent on something that is as trivial as the weather. Yeah. And then you start to agree. Yeah, that's right. Horrible. I had, you know, or there's too hot versus, Hey, wait a minute. It's awesome. I'm glad there's rain because now the, there's going to be grass and we're going to have water we need, or I'm glad it's sunny and it's warm because now we, you know, so it's a, it's a decision that you well, make. What did you expect Texas in August to be? <laughs> You expected to get up this morning at 75 degrees? Come on, what's the matter with you? <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be 100 yeah. degrees around here. Yeah. yeah. And you can laugh at it. Yeah. Instead of, you know, getting mad at, at the weather. Praise God. Yes, sir. We're getting there. We're learning. Yeah. I'm learning more out of this than anybody here. Glory to God. Amen. And so... <laughs> <laughs> So with the laughter, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's so much to laughter. We talked about when you anticipate laughter, what that does, it increases your, your blood pressure in a good sense for a short period, just like you're exercising. I have to tell you this. Yeah. It just, I hadn't thought of this in so many years. Yeah. I was, I, I was just in a, in a time of prayer mm. and I've been praising the Lord for a few moments and well, for a good little bit. Just as plain. Well, in fact, the, the no. Uh, let me let me do. <sighs> yeah, thank you, Lord. I, yeah, I, I got two situations mixed up. I was on a platform, and people were just praising God all over the place. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm I'm enjoying what they're doing, and I'm sitting there, and and the, and I heard this so plain. The Lord said, Kenneth. If it hadn't been for sin, I would have never had a serious thought. Wow. Wow. He's not serious. He's not a serious being. He is joy personified. Wow. If it hadn't been for sin, and that's and and hey, he's whipped it. Then it's not soon and very soon. <laughs> we are going to see the king. <laughs> Amen. And it's going to be over, Amen. though. And you oh. can get happy about that. Amen. Glory to Amen. God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can be happier in the meantime, mm-hmm. can't you? You can. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank That's you, Jesus. How much time we got, Tim? Oh, we can do a lot in four minutes. Okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> So uh, another piece that we learned in our research in terms of laughter is when you, when you laugh, what it does is it can, it, it can burn calories. <laughs> so we talk about the parity between laughing and exercise and calories and fat and what have you. So a, a hundred belly laughs a day can burn up to 50 calories. Okay. Um, and that can affect Man, your entire an body way. and it's the easy way. Right? <laughs> and, and so, and so again, that laughter and the exercise, they go hand in hand, but we think it's exercise is a hard thing. Maybe because we weren't on a, a team when we were in high school, but that's a mindset. So now we're moving from the physical back over to the soul, mind, will, and emotion is if you develop that mindset in swimming or in some habit, that's a good habit. And that pours over to your physical and then it pours over to your, to your spirit because now you have that self-discipline yeah. just like it takes to get up like you had mentioned at 530 to pray in the spirit and to seek the Lord. Well, some people might say that's a lot of work, but that can be a, just a fun time in the Lord. Yeah, it is. 
You, I mean, if you think about it, I, I just feel like I just want to laugh today. So I'm going to get up at 5 o'clock. I'm going to open the Word and just start and, and just have a party for a couple hours. We party. We want to party on a Thursday or Friday and with friends and, and, and what have you. And it's good to be around people. And, but we can do that every single day whenever we want. We can just tickle ourselves, you know, in the Lord. So then your spirit gets built up. Your soul is strong. Because then you make a decision. You say, I'm going to do this again tomorrow. I'm going to do. And then you start to be stronger in your choices and your decision and your resolve. And now that translates into the physical, this, you know, physical body. Hey, if I can spend time in the word and get up at five o'clock, I can sure enough exercise. Yeah. And now Amen. I'm going to exercise. And so now that becomes easy and it's no longer this hard, you know, I got to go to the gym and I've got to do all these things, all these excuses. So they all, again, go, uh, they work now together. Now you have proven that you don't need a gymnasium to exercise. Right. Yep. You don't have to tell some stories. Yes, sir. You still got two minutes. Two minutes. Tell so, one good exercise story. All right. So uh, one of the things, so just uh, one of the things that I do just is I do jumping jacks for 10 minutes and then and get major cardio. It's good for my lymphatic system. And then I'll do planks. Yeah. And because I heard you talk about planks, I said, I've got to, you know, Brother Copeland does a three minute plank. And here I am. I'm way back here at one minute. I, I got to really work on building. <laughs> stuff. But I, then I built my core up. I, I have my stamina. And then it has this DNA. It affects me at a DNA level. Well, what's interesting is, is that when you're exercising, the effect that it has on your, your DNA and the effect that it has on your mood and even the, uh, the uh, dopamine levels in your brain all increase. And then that uh, then leads to uh, a, a level of joy that you have. Like when you're sore when you exercise, you're kind of a little giddy even though you're sore. It's almost like it's an oxy, you know, you shouldn't be sore and be happy. Normally you think you'd be sore and you'd be upset. But it has this effect. So exercise is wonderful. And the, it, there's a study looking at uh, the cardiovascular risks that we have when we have a sedentary lifestyle. So what that is, is, is that if you just stand for six to eight hours or sit for six to eight hours at work, yeah. your risk of having a stroke or heart attack is pretty high. If you exercise for between 200 minutes and 300 minutes per week, so that's about 45 minutes to roughly an hour a day, then you completely reverse the effects of, of, of being sedentary and sitting for that six to eight hours at work. Well, praise God. Amen. And it, you, you develop it. I noticed this as you develop and it didn't take very long mm -hmm. because you're committed now and your, your confession's going right. I love this. And you say that before you feel the love. Mm -hmm. and, and as you develop your faith, I noticed this. It doesn't take very long. You get up feeling, well, I don't think I'll exercise today. And you think, well, yeah, maybe I better get in there. I need to get in there a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe. I, well, yeah, but you, you won't. You get to where you yeah. do you not want to do without it, even though you don't feel like doing it. Yeah. Amen. We're out of time. My, my. Whoa. <laughs> Dr. Avery Jackson, I got to say thank you, brother. Praise God. Thanks for We're going to do this all week next week. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.